So welcome everyone to another episode of Conversations. My name is Kristen Quarrel, for those of you who don't already know me. And I am super excited for today's guest. We have been digital, virtual friends for a little while. We have never met in person, but he has been named the top networker in Hollywood by Huffington Post. And he's an amazing person who just brings so many people together and builds so many relationships. His name is Armand Barati. Welcome. Hey, keep going, keep going with the compliments. I didn't want you to stop. <laughs> I know you love them. <laughs> I, think you, I think you have 10 more seconds in there. We'll be here That's all compliments. day, literally. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Heck yeah. How are you? How are I'm you doing during this quarantine? Been staying uh, proactive, um, doing a lot of uh, creative stuff, a lot of writing because I'm a screenwriter, um, a lot of developing projects, a lot of Zoom events like we're doing right now. Right. Um, and just, of course, binge watching a lot of things because that's homework, right? When you're in, in the, the entertainment industry, it's homework. So I binge watch a lot of things. So um, a lot of Netflix and Hulu right now. So Maybe you, Amazon, I'll get to you in a second. But What are you Hulu watching and, right now? Because I think I've watched literally like all of Netflix. I haven't really tapped into Hulu. But what are some gotcha. of your favorite shows you've been watching? I am currently on Money Heist and Shit's Creek. <gasps> okay, I've watched Money Heist. My sister is obsessed with Shit's Creek. She says it's hilarious. It's so good. I wouldn't, yeah. I didn't expect before, before we started watching and it's literally my brother time, me and my brother watch it together. And so, uh, we watched that in Money Heist together. Um, Shit's Creek is, is really awesome. It's, uh, it's, so they finished, the finished show, all six seasons, they've done, they're done. Season six has not hit US Netflix yet. They've hit UK Netflix, but, um, you can watch seasons one through five on Netflix right now. I don't know when season six will hit Netflix in the US, but luckily the UK already has it. Is there a way, so is there a way, because I know you do your research and everything, is there a way to watch it since it's already out on the UK, or? I don't know. That I don't know. I want to no. know. I'm going to yeah. find out. I think I'm going to find so out. So shameless plug, if you're a fan of Shit's Creek, next week we have two speakers on Zoom. So I'll plug that later on in the show. Nice. How have you been able to maintain your schedule? Because I feel you put out a post that had kind of like a lineup of all the Zooms that you've been doing. And yeah. I think for most of us, especially for me, I'm trying to find a balance between how much work I'm doing and how much free time I'm actually using to kind of do like self-care and just teach yeah. myself certain things. But you've just been like so busy. So fun fact, I don't keep track of my schedule. <laughs> um, luckily I'm home all, like I'm literally, I've literally, literally been home the last two and a half months. Like I've only been to Walmart and pick up, picking up my mom from work. That's the two things I go to. Aww. And so like, if I got a ping on my phone, you got to, you got to schedule zoom in 30 minutes. Okay. I'm here. Like, really? It's, I'm really bad with, with, with scheduling. I need an assistant. So actually I put a word out the other day, literally yesterday, I put a word out on Instagram story. I was like, Hey, anyone want to be my assistant? Just cause I that. like, I can easily put notes on a calendar, duh. But like, there's just so many things that are added and changed and like here and there that I need to work on that. So. Yeah, I think with us, we just kind of have like this cloud right here um, that just has so many things. Even with the Zoom, they off offer to put it on your calendar. And I always just hit cancel because it just, I'm not paying attention to it. So I feel like having, you know, you get to a point where you really do need someone to kind of be on top. And that's what having a great team is all about. Yeah. Are you actually looking to hire someone for real though, as like an assistant? Because, or is that just kind of like you making a joke? Because I know there's gonna be plenty of people who are willing to help out with that. Oh yeah, my DMs like blew up. I am honestly, yeah, I'm looking. It's 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 one of those things where obviously because of the times we're in, I can't do like a salary. I can't be like, hey guys, like I'll give you twelve dollars or fifteen dollars an hour to do this for me. It's like you just gotta see how it goes. Yeah. yeah. So we'll we'll figure it out. Cool. We'll so out. you're showing us a little bit of your place and where you are. You say that it's your home, uh yeah. from home. So where are you right now? So I'm in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Uh I was born and raised here for all we've been lived in the same house for thirty years. So um, I live in LA, but quarantined in with family in Virginia Beach. Luckily, luckily for me, guys, I skipped town. I left LA before the, the outbreak in LA. So what happened was um, I was visiting family in Virginia. So I did, in late February, I held a, um, a mixture in New York City. Then I took the train down to Virginia Beach. I was expecting to be here for a week. And so I'm one of those guys who, I live, I live, on, the, I live on the edge. So basically, I don't book... Uh, round trips I book one ways yeah so um when I went when I came down here to Virginia Beach I was like okay at the end of the week I'm gonna buy my ticket home to LA a week passes by 
news breaks, like seven people have been tested positive for Corona in, in LA County. And so my parents are like, ah, you're staying here. What? So, so I've been here for two and a half months. My, like, I, I like to tell people my one week vacation to Virginia Beach turned into like week 13 now, week 13, 14. I've lost count, but it's been two and a half months, almost three whole months. So I'm here. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely been a long time. I was out mid-February and then I took one quick trip in March, like March 6th for a friend's graduation. And that same day I flew back just knowing exactly what I was going to come home to. I'm in New York. Uh, I was trying to see you in New York, but you were busy. I know. I was also flying back though. And then everything hit and I was like, okay, I'm not seeing anyone. I don't want to get sick. <laughs> so Fair enough. Um, fair enough. You weren't you weren't like, okay, you didn't ditch me or anything like that, okay? No, okay. never. Um, but I let's talk a little bit about, right, because those are two, where you grew up and where you are now are, uh, well, not physically now, but where you live now are two completely different places. What has your journey been like going to LA? Like, what did you go there expecting or maybe not expecting because you live on such a limb, but how has that journey been? been the most difficult part? It's so funny because... My first, my first and only internship in LA was in 2012, and I was 22 at the time. So before that, when you see LA um, portrayed in, on television and film, it's like you see the glamour stuff. Like you see um, this Hollywood sign, you see like Beverly Hills, you see like the two, you see um, the big theaters, and you, then you see like the premieres, you see the red carpets, and you see uh, what's it called the the big shopping area, um, the the tourist parts. You see the tourist parts on Hollywood Boulevard. Right. You, know, you see those. I get there and a month then I'm like, what is this? <laughs> I mean, because you see, they'll show you on TV what they want you to see, right? Oh, so yeah. the tour stuff. Then when you live in LA, we spend more time in LA, you realize the, the reality of it. Like the, the reality of having to hustle every single day yeah. to, to make ends meet, to, to feed yourself. Like some days will, will, some days will be super hard and I'll be like, how am I going to, how am I going to make rent tomorrow? How am I going to feed myself, you know? So you don't see it on television and in, 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 in film. Um, so the hardest part for me was transitioning from having to, from living with family, not having to pay for rent, not having to pay for food, you know? And then here I am smack dab as an entrepreneur slash writer slash, I guess, occasional actor in LA. I'm like, yo, how am I gonna, how am I gonna survive the month? So it was a lot of like growing pains yeah. when I officially moved in 2017. So 2012, I interned, 2017, I officially moved, I took my stuff and moved. My first year, I slept on the floor. So here's a funny thing. It's like people say, okay, so they call me top network in Hollywood, which is a cool title, right? Mm -hmm. But then I'm just like anybody else in terms of their lifestyle. So right. that was 2016 is when I was called top network in Hollywood. 2017, I'm sleeping on the floor. Wow. No pillow. I'm sleeping on, my head was rested on um, bed sheets. I, I pile up bed sheets and put my head under, and my head on top of it. That's how I lived for the first two months of LA when I, was, when I officially moved to 2017. 2018, I was on a couch. 2019, I made it to bed. So it was like levels. Every year was levels, like from, from, the, from the floor to the couch to the bed. So I'm on the way up. I think that's pretty amazing because, and I like that you, that you openly talk about that because a lot of times, you know, the more headlines you're making and the more articles are writing about you, you know, people just think, wow, you made it or you have your stuff together and you're excelling. And then oftentimes I feel like with creatives, we have to juggle our personal life and our professional life so yeah. well just to look apart. Um, and there's a lot of stress and sh um, struggles that come with that. And for you to say, you know, hey, Huffington Post was highlighting me as top networker in Hollywood, but here I am sleeping on pretty much nothing. That's, yeah. that's part of a, what a lot of people go through. Um, do you have any, anyone that, um, you kind of went there and had as a mentor kind of person that you looked up to or that gave you some piece of advice maybe that you could give to someone else? Yeah. So, um, okay. So in 2018, uh, it was my second full year in Hollywood in, in LA. I lived in the Valley, actually not Hollywood yet. I live in Hollywood now, but at the, at the time I lived in uh, the Valley. And so I was going through this tough time, not like a depression kind of thing, but more so like, uh, what's, where's my career going? Like I have this momentum behind me, but why am I still not working? You know? And so my friend put in perspective for me. She's a really big uh, manager in the industry. Her name is Konica. And um, I was turning, I was 29 at the time, turning 30. And I was like telling her stuff. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I think I'm going to go back to Virginia Beach and stay there for a while, then come back to LA. And she's like, she's like, why? And so basically I was just like, you know, fed up. I was like, what's going on with my career? 
and basically it came down it came down to age for me like i'm hitting 30 i still have nothing to show for you know all these articles all these highlights but no physical like contents you know it's like where's my where's my first contract in the industry you know where's my first film right yep. and uh, she's like you know what you're looking you're thinking of it the wrong way she goes um age doesn't matter when you make an industry because when you make it you don't care how old you are so it's like if it was 30 31 32 it's like you shouldn't care what the number, the age you make it, because when it happens, it happens. Right. So I, it changed my perspective. So I was like, okay, shoot. If I sell my first script when I'm 31, screw it. Like, I'll be happy. I don't care how old I am. Right. You know? well, so that really that, changed um, things for me. That's amazing. I think it's very important to have someone that you can kind of, the reason I asked that is because there's a really awesome interview for anyone who may want to watch it. Um, Diddy was talking to an entrepreneur by the name of Ray. Um, he basically asks him how he kind of like rose to the top and flourished and really excelled in his career. And he says, once he realized that he can't do everything by himself, um, he realized that it's a lot easier when you just put position, people in positions um, and give them opportunities to help you out. And at the same time, they're also, you know, an opportunity for themselves. So they say in Hollywood, which you are in now, um, that is all about who you know, right? They say it's literally all about who you know, that it's a tough um, industry, it's a tough business, it's very competitive. How important do you think it is for people to really build those relationships and maintain them as well? Oh, it's huge. And it's one of those things where it really, okay, so what's it's a gamble in the industry because someone may have their big break six months into this, them trying someone may have their big break six years into them trying and they may know the same people, you know? Um, so for me, it's like the reason I do these, all these events is because, and I'm connecting people is because a lot of these people that I have as special guests are like, Hey, Herman, like, I want to know what you're doing six months from now. Like, hit me up. Let me see what you're working on, you know? So it really is important for me to build my contacts with people and the relationships, not just knowing them, but building the relationship over time. Cause it's one thing to know them. Cool. Hey, what's up? It's another thing for them to really be involved in what you do and be emotionally invested in, in you as a person. So that's why I like to build context. And also what I like to tell people is that the reason I do my, my, like my platform is events and all this, all this type of networking. So I like to, um, I like to uplift myself while uplifting other people. So like, yeah, I'm getting connected through these, through, the, through these events and through these guest speakers. And, but at the same time, my platform, my audience is meeting them as well. So like just the other day, this is amazing because just the other day, um, one of my guest speakers, he wrote on a, he wrote on a TV show, one of my favorite TV shows. He used to be on, uh, he was on season two and season three of This Is Us. So he okay. was a writer and producer, one of my favorite shows. But writer and producer from the show, he spoke for our platform two, two weeks ago. A week later, he hits me up. He goes, hey, Armand, there's a guy named so-and-so that I met on your Zoom event. And he, answered, he asked a question. He goes, you know what? I don't know what it is about him, but I would love for you to connect me to him. I want to read a script. So the other day I connected them through email. If something happens to this gentleman's script and he takes off and, it, and it's not me, I'm happy because it was my platform that, that got him, you know, discovered if anything happens. So I'm happy about that. You know, so I'm, and I know that it'll come around full circle at some point because, you know, I'm helping them. And um, like even my, my management company, like I'm, in, I'm managed by a, a boutique, boutique company called Imagine Content. First year, they're one year in, doing great. They're developing projects and producing projects, really good stuff they came together from meeting at my events. So the founders met at my, one of my events came wow. together and said, Hey, let's, let's start something. And now I'm being managed by them when no one else would manage me. So it's like, it came full circle. Yeah. So yeah, it really is about connecting people and connecting, connecting myself in, this, in the same manner. Yeah. And I, and I find that the more time that I spend, because I also do, you know, I do the acting, um, I had an R&B podcast. So then I kind of got into the interview way of doing things and I fell in love with it really just off of the strength of having conversations with people. And like you mm -hmm. said, you know, those connections when they're not only working in your favor, but they're helping someone else. I think that's so important. Not only because, you know, if you really want to just see people excel and do well, it's going to make you really happy when that happens because sure. of you or not because of you, but it all comes back around. So I have found in so many instances that I go somewhere or I take a class, for example, yeah. I take an acting class and I took an acting class with Perva Betty. She's from AMAW who hey. I wanted to get into that. Um, AMAW was founded by Anthony Mindel and he is one of the most amazing human beings that I think I've 
ever met. And I can't say I have like a best friend relationship with him, but just from the I time can, I think. I know. <laughs> Don't tweet your heart. Yeah. Just from the time that I took those classes and intensives with him, I mean, I think he's had more of an impact on my life than some of the people that I've known for years. You know, his way of teaching, and it's not just about acting, but he teaches you a lot about yourself. Um, that's another thing that I want to still watch. Um, his film is, his short film, feature film, is streaming on Hulu for anyone who's looking for something new to watch. Um, how was the release party? Because I saw that you went to the release party. I was there, yeah, it was cool to see a lot of uh, good looking actors who uh, look better than I do. I'm kidding. No, it was a beautiful crowd. I'm like, yo, what is this? I felt like I was on a model casting call or something. But um, no, it was great. It was a really cool time. It was cool to see fellow artists supporting artists. You know, I love seeing creative people support creative people. So it's like, hey, it's not my film on the, on the projector right now, but it's mm -hmm. a friend of mine. So yeah. I felt good about it, you know? So that was a cool, a cool experience for sure. Yeah, Where We Go From Here is the name of the, uh, the short, the feature film. It's streaming on Hulu, so if you have a chance, watch it. Um, speaking of, if you're looking for a new read, and I have this handy, a left brain turn right, which I have. Oh, boy, that's a parking ticket. What page ticket. you on? This is a parking ticket. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a parking ticket in there, but I do have it signed by Anthony, and he wrote me a cute little note. But so, um, yeah. I actually went through this already, but what I want to do is go back because there's a couple of places where you could write things. Yeah. Um, where you could really jot down and he gives you little exercises. It's amazing. Um, it touches a little bit about, you know, your creative side and exploring because um, there comes a point in time in your life where the, the little kid in you starts to develop and you start to lose a little bit of that, that plain kind of um, sense. And that's why he says at left, that's the left part of your brain. He goes at left brain, turn right. Just go back, go back to like being able to just explore, feel, play. And that's where really the beauty of everything comes from. Um, I feel like with this quarantine, right, we are kind of just like smacked in the face with a reality check. Uh, a lot of us have either been cut off from work or it's giving us more time to work. Like you said, you're writing more. Um, what are some of the things that you're focusing on or maybe adjusting from here going on forward? Oh yeah, because I pivoted a lot. So you know that I've done a lot of live events in the past. So a lot of industry events in person, LA, New York, Chicago. I've done London, I've done Toronto. I was gonna do Sydney this year, but that was scrapped. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I was, you know, these major cities and, and so the bulk of my, <laughs> My bulk of my income, but also my brand was live events, you know? And so when, when that ended, when live events had to be cut off, I had to pivot. So the way that I pivoted was through Zoom. I didn't know Zoom existed until the quarantine. Me neither. So I knew Skype, I knew Google Meetup, uh, Hangout, I knew Meetup, uh, not Meetup, sorry, um, Meeting, meet, Team, Team? Google Hangout, called? which I think now is Google Meet or something. Something like that, yeah, Teams yeah. or something. Anyway, that shows how much I know. Um, <laughs> so, so I had to pivot. And so, um, which is actually kind of a good thing because when you do live events in the industry, um, it goes from like something that's brick and mortar where you can only have people in LA show up to LA events. You can only have people in New York show up to New York events. Whereas now, like we have, we're a global audience. We have people from all over. Like I'll be hosting an event where people from LA, New York, London, Amsterdam, and Sydney will all be on the same chat. It's like, you, you guys in Sydney are awake right now? Like there, there's people from across the world that are joining in. So it's beautiful because um you know people get to connect in a circumstance that they couldn't otherwise have connected yeah so I, have I, think people, I have people collaborating with each other from across the world and they wouldn't they couldn't do that if they if we just did live events you know so in, in, a, in a in a weird way it was a good good thing i'm not saying i'm not saying this quarantine is good i'm saying there's positive things that could come of it and so and also on the, on the creative side i have been able to devote time to to um writing a lot because when I'm in LA, I have to focus on making rent. So I'm doing events, 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 events. It's like, where's your time for writing? My manager's like, you got to write. I got to put you out there. You got to write. So I'm like, okay, I'll, I will when I'm financially stable with me not spending money here quarantined at home in Virginia beach with family, not having to pay for Uber rents or food. <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm devoting time to writing. I'm actually turning in a, a second draft of a script to, tonight to a, a producer director duo who is waiting for it. But oh, um, nice. it's like well, a, it's a hundred K project that I'm hoping to get off the ground there. They, they are open to doing it with me and yeah. it would be cool. It'd be, it's like my first feature. So I'm excited, you know, however it turns out, it could be good or bad. 
it's still content. It's still something that I get to put out. So. Well, I always say your work is your work. Um, I, I've had to get out of that thinking mentality for a long time, like little by little, but I always say, if you just know what you're creating is, is good in your eyes, if you feel good about it and you know, it has a purpose, then yeah. it's, there is no good or bad. It's just a matter of the right timing, the right people having it in their hands. And, um, you know, if it's meant to be, it'll work out. If it's not there, you know, it might, it might come full circle 10 years later. Like that. I feel like with this industry, there's a reboot. Okay. Yeah. But, um, I have started to try, <laughs> I've been trying to start writing, for so long. Um, I have like the ultimate writer's block. I want to write a short film, even if it's like, you know, a five minute short film that goes on YouTube. Um, but for people who have writer's block, like really bad writer's block, is there anything that you recommend? Like is when you first got started with writing, like, is there anything that you would recommend to people or just to get out of like that, that toughness of where to start? Yeah, for sure. So some people will even say writer's block doesn't exist. It's just a, a thing we came, we came up in our head, you know? It's like, mm -hmm. you can still physically write. Like, I have a, a friend of mine who is Oscar nominated, and he gets these writer blocks too. But he says, what he says is, don't think of it as a writer block, a writer's block. What you do is you literally sit at your laptop and just write. Write whatever comes to mind. It could be about nothing at all to do with your story. Just yeah. write it in, write it in your script. Cause you can always go back to later just but by you just constantly writing it will get those ideas that you wanted to eventually come out you know so yeah. you'd be you can be writing about absolutely nothing and all of a sudden it hits you oh this is perfect for that page and you go back to it later so i like to what i like to do is just consistently just write you know yeah. um uh you gotta have it on page first before you edit it yeah it's a work That's in progress i think literally just like always that's why i think like I said, sometimes with the difference in, in this industry with acting, with writing, with directing is you spend so much time and sometimes you have to move on to something else. You come yeah. back, but you know, something might pop and you're looking at it going, wow, I did that like 10 years ago. So, oh yeah, no, with literally the other day, um, I am revisiting scripts that have been shelved by me 10 years ago, nice. like back in my college days. So I'm revisiting this quarantine has allowed me to revisit stuff that I haven't seen in ages. That's so that's, that's cool. Yeah. There's um, something that you came up with that that's really catchy and caught my attention. Um, talk to me about where our montage came from and what exactly it is. Okay. So when I was thinking of a personal brand, um, I wanted my name in it for, for sure, for obvious reasons. And like a lot of words have the word, have the word man in it, like M-A-N, right? So, but I was like, you know, I'm going to be super, super catchy with it. And um you know, there's a show called Entourage. There's a show called Entourage and a movie called Entourage. And it's, on the word Entourage, it, it connotes, connotates, what's the word? Connotates? Connotates. <laughs> connotates. So Entourage connotates Hollywood. Hollywood living, Hollywood, like your friends, your, your friends list, you know? So the people around you. And so my Entourage essentially is the people around me. It's not me, it's the people around me. Your so, crew. Yeah, the crew. So the Zoom events, I'm not a Entourage. Even though I'm speaking on behalf of Montrage, the people attending the Zoom events are Montrage. They're they're part of the the part of the uh, the event. They're part of the the platform, you know. So our Montrage um, gives back to certain causes. So we do a lot of events, a lot of events that give back to different causes. Uh, we've done a lot with like mental health awareness. We've done um, cancer awareness. We've done um, human trafficking awareness. So and it's not like it's not like these these events are making like, you know millions of dollars each event it's just it's whatever we can so it's, I, I don't want to give the impression that like we raise millions of dollars for these causes no it's like whatever we can at the end of the day we, we give back to those causes so so you just mentioned a bunch of organizations that you've worked with i wanted to do something really special during this time because i just feel like some of us we have it okay you know yeah. i thank god that i have a roof over my head i thank god that i have money to buy food whenever i need to you know i have family that i live with right now even if it's just like my sister and the kids like there's, there's always, there's something there for me during this quarantine. And there are a lot of people that are alone or don't have an income or, you know, they've been laid off of work. And with all these organizations and these um, foundations that you work with, I wanted to donate something. I want to ask for anyone who's either watching or when we post this, if you see this video, even if it's a little bit, um, if you would choose something that means a lot to you, 
I would like to go ahead and donate and then also ask for all of my followers to donate. So I don't know if you have something like that comes right off top of your okay, head. Sure. So for the last two years, I've been doing, um, periodically I've been doing the uh, benefits for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, LA chapter. I've done, I think I've done one for the, the US chapter, but specifically for the LA chapter because I live in LA. So right. I've done that with them. Um, that comes to mind. They're doing great stuff. Uh, you know, this is, I don't want to go dark here, but I actually lost a member of our Zoom community recently. So due, due to suicide. Um, I did so, see, was that yeah. what your post was about that you had um, nominated? Was it a female that you nominated as a winner and then you- Yeah, so I was, you know, I do, aside from events and writing, I uh, put on um, film and screenplay and uh, music contests. And we did a music contest recently. And um, the winner will, is from Toronto. And um, she, she won the contest and I announced it to the winners um, on, on April 21st, not knowing she passed on April 18th. So I, I was, I've been emailing her for the last like three, like three weeks, you know, like, Hey, where are you at? Didn't get a response. And all of a sudden one day I get a message from one of her mutual, one of, one of her friends. She's like, Hey, I didn't know you knew, I didn't know if you knew this, but she passed, you know? And I was like, what happened? She's, and he should have told me like, you know, the, the quarantine got to her mental health. So I do a lot with the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, and I'm not an expert on mental health. I don't want to pretend like I am, right. but I like to highlight mental health. Yeah. And, um, because entertainment industry or not, everyone th everyone's going through something, and especially the entertainment industry, because you know you see your friends who get rejected a lot. You see friends whose careers are at a standstill, and you're just like, what do I do? Yep. And so I get it. I, I understand where they're coming from, and I just pray that no no one I know, no one that I know has you know. Uh, commit suicide but it does happen and yeah. like in this instance somebody I knew from my platform so she she was on our zoom events literally the week before she passed so and this is part of why I say um you know and again like you said I don't want to go dark I don't want to get too dark and sentimental either because definitely can go there but I just think you know even during times like this I make it a point to say check on your strongest friends you know it's not always the people that look like they're suffering or anything like that. Sometimes it's the, the strongest person in your, in your circle or in your community that is battling either depression or battling anxiety or just the fear in life. You know, there's a lot of people right now that are kind of fearful of where their career or their path is going from here on out. We don't know how long we're going to be in this kind of situation. Um, but you said two things that really stood out to me that I would like to share with everyone. Um, one of them, you said the best gift that you can give someone is time. And I want to thank you for giving me your time today and everyone else. You have so much to share and we've had so much fun already. I am upset that it's limited time. Next thing that you said is every day is a day forward. And I think such a small phrase holds so much weight. Um, but literally it's one of the things that I always thank, you know, God for every time I wake up, every morning that I wake up, I do my stretch first of all, cause I'm getting older and I've had an injury, but I do my stretch and I'm always just like, you know what? It's a new day. Like every day is literally a day forward. So Thank you, you know, for just the way that you are, you know, you come and bring so many people together and you do it literally for just the love of, of, of seeing people succeed. And also because you have your own goals, but, um, I'm going to lift up the energy a little bit in here today. And I wanted to play a little game with you. Um, rapid fire questions. Oh Lord. Okay. Yeah. Anything to do with the romance? I can't tell you that's, right. that's going to ruin it all. <laughs> I'm single. So the only rules that I have in this game is do not think about anything um, and say the first thing that comes to mind. So I'm a lot scared. of them are okay. going to be this or that. Literally, you cannot think about it. You just go. Oh, Ready? okay. Ready? Yes. Wiggle it out. <laughs> okay. Love or money? Love. Texting or phone calls? Phone call. Favorite holiday? Christmas. Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram? Instagram. Action or rom-coms? Action. Who has it easier, men or women? Go. Men. Ah! <laughs> Most exciting city in the U.S.? Oh, uh, New York. Wait. Oh, yes! <laughs> I love you for that. Okay, last one. This is not really a this or that question, but <laughs> if the Kardashian sisters were all drowning and you could only save one, who would it be? Kendall. Kendall? Why? What's his name? He's laughing up here. Gary. Gary, thank you for your humor. <laughs> that's amazing. Okay. Um, that's a good one. Yeah. 
There's a lot of sisters. A lot. I just feel like she's the chillest, like the most easy to hang out with. Yeah, I don't know any of them personally. I can't really say that. I think they're all entertaining. They get a lot of um, criticism, but um, I love the show. I, I love what they do. Um, Kendall is definitely, she's gorgeous. She is just oh, like for sure. naturally. Too just tall for me, but longer. yeah. Anyone's too tall for me. I'm 5'1", so. <laughs> all right, so I think we're going to wrap this up. Um, I want you to include, Erman, if you can, either text it to me. But the foundation that you mentioned, um, mm -hmm. I want to run a little something with that. So we're going to include sure. that. And the book that I mentioned and everything that you have going on, we're going to have all the links set up and all the information. But um, thank you for sharing your time with us. Of course. I'm surprised that you uh, kept track of my quotes that I put out there. I love it. No, because when something literally – I'm, I'm – I'm very on top of those things. Like when I see something, I'm like, wow, I screenshot it. Um, so I have a couple things from you that I'm just always, cause you're always putting up such motivational quotes. Um, but those really stood out to me. And then I did see your post about the listener that, you know, lost the battle with uh, depression. So that really meant a lot. And I think if we could just share that with people, you know, I have a very big sense of also uplifting everyone else around me. So I want to thank everyone that's tuned in. This has been another episode of Conversations. You can follow Armand at Armand Barati, myself at Kristen J. Coral. That's for Instagram and um, Chris Lava for Twitter. That's two A's at the end. Uh, and we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thank you for tuning in. Ciao.